So UX writing is still one of the hardest fields out there and currently people from all kinds of different backgrounds try to enter the field and thrive in it. However, doing so is not easy and today I want to share with you how I became a UX writer who lands freelance gigs and gets attractive offers by cool companies. And since we don't gatekeep here, I will also share my personal strategies of how I came here. So let's do this. Hey everyone, my name is Kat and I teach people about writing in tech and on this channel you'll find everything you need to know about especially UX writing. So if you want to learn more about all of that, make sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell. Now, currently there are a lot of resources about how you can start and build a career as a UX writer, but we all know that it's probably not as easy as completing a UX writing challenge, putting all of that into your portfolio, applying for jobs, and then that's it. The problem is that competition on the job market is rising and also companies raise their standards of what they expect from UX writers. So it gets increasingly difficult to break into the field and actually succeed in it. Now, I started working as a UX writer in 2018, first in a side job, then in a permanent position, and then as a freelancer. Now, before I tell you about the things that have helped me become successful in the field, I want to give you a quick disclaimer because there are definitely strategies that you can use to have an impact on your own success, but there are also things that have impact on your success in UX writing that are completely out of your control. The first thing, for example, is the economy. We've all heard about global layoffs in the tech industry, and of course, under these circumstances, it's harder to land a job or get promoted as a UX writer or get hired as a UX writing freelancer. For example, I started working as a UX writer three years before COVID even started. And we all know how much it changed the global economy. But when I started, the economy was great. Second, there is your local market. So UX writing might be a big thing in the US and it might be a big thing in China, for example, but is it also in your country? Is it a field companies are excited to invest in right now? For example, in my case, when I stumbled into UX writing, no one in Germany had heard about it and the clients of the agency that I worked for didn't want to buy it, which was a big problem. And we tried to give it away for free, but even then they didn't want it. Okay. They couldn't understand why we would make such a fuss about those tiny words in apps and websites. Okay. I mean, now, you know, and today I write German and English UX copy and there are actually very few UX writers that write in German and there are even fewer German UX writers that have multiple years of experience in UX writing. So basically out of luck, I currently have a very strong competitive advantage, which of course may also change over time. Third is timing or put differently, mere luck. I hadn't even applied for a UX writing position when I became a UX writer. I applied as a general writer at this agency and then they heard about UX writing and then they said to me, hey, can you do that? And to be honest, if they hadn't asked me, I don't know if I would have even tried UX writing. So it is definitely about luck. It is about being in the right place at the right time. And sometimes you just aren't and things don't fall into place. So these are three factors that are completely out of your control and they can work in your favor, but also they can work against you. So what you need is strategies that work even when these three factors work against you. And there are definitely some. So let's check them out. So first of all, I had some trouble choosing between the terms successful and requested because the truth is I am requested. So companies ask me if I want to be a UX writer for their teams or if I can help them out with a certain UX writing problem. But successful is a big, big word and it really depends on your personal definition of what success is for you. And this is why I don't use this word. 
So right now I'm about five, six years in the game. I have written UX copy for about 15 clients, large corporations, small startups, whatever, all kinds of industries. And as I've said before, I've done so while working for an agency and while working as a freelancer after I quit my job at the agency. And during those different stages of my UX writing career, I got a very clear idea of what helped me and pushed me in this career. So let me put this into words of advice, okay? And my first piece of advice would be start small, don't rush things. Learning UX writing online with a course or with a book will give you a basic idea of what UX writing is, but working on a real project is a completely different thing, okay? And one thing that has helped me is I started working as a UX writer as a side hustle. I actually finished writing my dissertation back then, and when that was over, a huge part of my life was just gone. And to fill that hole, I decided to take on a side job, so next to my corporate communications job. And what I did is I applied for a job in that UX UI agency, and I started writing all kinds of text for them for like five to 10 hours per week, basically. And during that time, I also completed some UX writing tasks. So I had the privilege to slowly learn how apps and websites are built. I learned about usability and UX patterns and I learned how to be part of a UX team. And all of that was kind of a soft start for me, which was good because when I started working as a full-time UX writer and we offered this service to clients and clients actually started to buy this service officially, I was booked full time. That was a whole different thing because I just needed to deliver and perform because both the clients and my team relied on me and they expected me to be a functioning part of the system. And I think I was only able to thrive here because I kind of had this soft start. So my piece of advice is try dipping a toe in UX writing by taking on small side projects, you know, offering your services on Fiverr or other platforms before you go all in, okay? That will help you to do a good job from the get-go once you get a full-time job. And you know, it will also help you to not be overwhelmed when you work in your first full-time UX writing job. The second thing is explore different topics, explore all corners and niches of your craft. One thing that has helped me a lot is that when I started working in the agency, no one there had a clue about UX writing. Clients had no clue about UX writing and I had no clue about UX writing. So we basically started working with UX writing and problems started to pop up as we went. So. How do we document UX copy, for example? How do we integrate UX writing into our processes? How do we localize a product for another country, et cetera, et cetera. And I alone was, of course, responsible for finding answers to these questions. I just had to. So since I started, I have made it a habit to dive deep into all kinds of aspects of UX writing, which is also why I teach UX writing online, why I produce online courses about all of these niche topics in UX writing, you know, user research for UX writing, cultural aspects of UX writing, all of that, okay? Because learning about these topics and integrating that knowledge in my UX writing practice has helped me get a 360 view of the craft. And it has trained me how to explore new corners of UX writing. And that is very beneficial to my clients right now because when they have a problem that is completely new to them and completely unique, I can authentically and wholeheartedly tell them, hey, whatever it is, I'll make sure we find a way. So I know this may sound like a pretty generic piece of advice, but please open your calendar right now and book a daily time slot where you go through new blog articles about UX writing, where you just sit and write down questions you ask yourself about UX writing, things that you want to learn about, things that you want to try, etc. And make that a daily habit because that will ultimately make you knowledgeable in this craft. And I promise you, people will notice that. They will see that you have both broad and deep knowledge about the craft that is UX writing. 
Now, kind of related to that, I also recommend establishing a service mindset. And this applies to you whether you work as a permanently employed UX writer or as a freelance UX writer. This even applies to you if you are not even a UX writer, okay? This applies to any professional, basically. Now, I have learned that people like working with me because when they trust me as their UX writer, I make sure I have their back in this regard, okay? So when they have a problem, I tell them, hey, we will find a way. I will do my best to solve this problem. We might come across some challenges that may require us to invest some time and money and energy, but I promise we will do that. We will find a way. And sometimes clients come to me with, to be honest, really bad ideas. So voice and tone decisions that could harm their brand, for example, or whatever. And of course, first I try to convince them to maybe, you know, not go down that road. But if they tell me, hey, Kat, this is what we want to do, then I tell them, okay, then we will do this in the best way possible to reduce the risk that come with this strategy and with this plan, okay? And this is not only the perspective that I try to take when talking to clients, I also try to do that when I work with a team or communicating with my boss, which does not mean that I sugarcoat things or that I'm extremely nice because one of my principles is definitely to be very risk aware and also to create awareness of risks of certain choices of words, voice and tone decisions, whatever. But I make sure that the people around me know that I will do my best to turn their vision into reality and be of value and to do the best that I can to help them accomplish their goals and that they can count on me. And then I will reward their trust with my commitment. And I know that many people think they have this kind of mindset, but please take some time and reflect a little about whether this is really true or not. For example, I get a lot of messages asking me, hey, Kat, could you take a look at my portfolio? Or, hey, could you tell me how to become a UX writer? And then I give them advice and I take my time and I try to help them. And many of these people don't even reply saying thank you or ask me, hey, is there anything that I could do in return? They basically just use you and they really do only what's necessary, which in that case is nothing. So when you want to thrive in UX writing or basically in any job, make sure the first thing that you put on in the morning after waking up, brushing your teeth is a service mindset provide value and comfort to the people around you and show them you're there to do your part, okay? And I promise people will want to talk to you. They will want to work with you and they will recommend working with you to their friends. And also collaboration and working with others will be much smoother for you and more fun all along. But for all those times that are not smooth and nice and fun, one important piece of advice is build resilience. Seriously, read books about it, watch YouTube videos about it, take online courses about it and work on that skill. Because due to very different reasons, working as a UX writer can be very tough. There has been absolutely no client. Listen, no client, not one client that has not shown disrespect towards UX writing at one point or another. Some will tell you, hey, why is your UX copy so boring? Can you make it funnier? Some will tell you, hey, you don't need to be part of the entire design process. We will give you a call when we need some words. And others will tell you, hey, I can write these pieces of copy myself. I don't need you. I even met clients who told me, hey, I didn't know writing a few words for an app was a real job. But it's not only these statements. For example, when I started working for the agency, as I said, none of our clients knew about UX writing and they sure as hell didn't want to pay for it. So my manager sat me down and told me, hey, we thought we could offer UX writing, but none of our clients want to book your service. So, you know, what can we do? And that was a major setback for me. I felt like a failure because we thought it was the next big thing. And Ultimately, like one or two years later, when UX writing became that next big thing, we sold the service to 
each and every client and I quickly became overbooked and overworked and I was really pushed beyond the limits of what I could handle in terms of workload. And when it was all too much, that was when I decided to quit my job and become a freelancer. Then I had a lot of wonderful clients, of course, but at some point I also had a client, for example, who was really disrespectful concerning my boundaries, uh, did not pay me, etc. So I had to let that client go, which of course was a financial problem. So long story short, UX writing is a new discipline and just because you know the value of it, that doesn't mean that others know the value of it know your value, respect your boundaries, respect you as a person, okay? There will definitely be stress, there will be struggle, trouble, setbacks, everything. So knowing when to take a hit and taking that hit and getting over it, but also knowing when to quit and leave a certain environment behind, then recovering from that stress and having strategies in place to manage your emotions, all of that is crucial. And again, this applies even more to UX writers because the discipline is still so young and there are so many misconceptions about it that people just make a lot of assumptions and then project these assumptions onto you. And I promise you, your feelings will get hurt. And since you deserve to be well and okay and happy and also find fulfillment in your job, being able to overcome these emotional setbacks is an important part of staying motivated to still give your best as a UX writer. And the last piece of advice that I have for you is a very practical one, much, much more practical than the previous ones, and that is have a killer portfolio. If you also follow me on Instagram, by the way, feel free to do that. You know that I had procrastinated building my portfolio for quite a long time because basically clients were just coming to me because other clients recommended working with me. But for quite a long time, I didn't have a portfolio because of that reason. I just didn't need one. Now, at some point I thought, okay, this is definitely a corner of UX writing that I need to explore. So learn how to build an effective portfolio for myself. And I even had all of these projects under my belt. So I basically had all that it takes. So I did a lot of research on what a great portfolio should look like, the kind of information it should contain, etc. And then I built my own portfolio and sent it out to companies who are obviously looking for a UX writer. And seriously, the reaction to that really blew my mind. I really experienced quite a lot of companies praising my portfolio for being clean, well-structured, informative, versatile, rich in projects. And many of those companies really wanted to work with me. And on the other hand, not having a portfolio really kept me from applying to cool companies. So today I have my portfolio ready and when I'm open for work and I see a cool company running a job ad for UX writing positions, I just send them my portfolio and ask them if they could also see themselves working with a UX writing freelancer. And usually I'm very successful with that. So really have a portfolio, have it ready and optimize it as you go. Now, as you may know, I have an online course about how to build a UX writing portfolio where you will find a step-by-step -step guide and you can find the link to that course in the description below. But I will also publish some more videos right here on this channel about how to build your portfolio and also show you parts of my portfolio because I think that may be very helpful. So this is it for my top pieces of advice on how to become a requested UX writer, a successful UX writer if you like, whatever you may call it. I hope you also have read between the lines and noticed the things that I didn't mention. For example, I did not mention networking with others. I did not mention building a personal brand. I did not mention publishing blog posts to make yourself known to the community, for example. All of that is very nice to have and it will help you to strengthen your expert status in the community and that may help you gain visibility in the community, but career-wise, these things will not necessarily help you sharpen your skills, become better at what you do, convince clients, get recommended, land a job, and ultimately get requested by clients, at least 
That's my experience. But of course, I'd also love to hear about your experiences and I'd also love to learn more about your thoughts on all of this, okay? So do you agree with my points? Do you disagree? Whatever, okay? So let me know in the comments and let's have a conversation about this, okay? So this is a good moment to end this video. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram where I also share free tips and tricks about writing in tech and UX writing especially. And of course, as always, keep on writing, enjoy the process, and I hope to see you sometime soon.